Okay, so uh, play with your clothes. I love the title. Um, we're going to have some fun um, talking about uh, tech-enabled um, apparel. And um, first, I should uh, introduce our guests, so our speakers, Eliza Licht, uh, who's the strategic advisor of Aware and author of Leave Your Mark. Uh, and Leron, Shlomo, am I saying your Leron? Please say. <laughs> Leron Slaninsky. Slaninsky, thank you, CEO and co founder of Aware Solutions. So, you know, we've seen a lot of wearable tech um, that tracks consumers' um, use of apparel. Uh, we've seen apparel that provides a wellness dis assist, um, but Aware is quite different. And I think we were going to start with a bit of a video to demonstrate the idea, or did you want to uh, say can... a few words first? We can start with the video. Yeah, okay. let's start with the video. Let's run the video. <laughs> Thank you. Give everybody the idea. Real quick, I just wanted to pop in and tell you all about the Tommy Jeans Explore Collection by Tommy Hilfiger. Where basically every time you wear a Tommy piece, you earn points towards coupons and really cool rewards like concerts, fashion shows. It basically turns wearing your clothes into a game, which is super awesome because you're already wearing it anyway. So why not earn points and rewards for doing something that you're already going to do every single day? Our scanning, let me hold it up to here so I can get it. There it is. You see? It popped up. Dope. Easy. Super easy. And it's really cool. It's like Pokemon Go, I think, in my opinion, because when you look, there's like little reward stations you can go to, and if you pass by it, you can get points. So, I like it. Oh. Do I'm I'm right. Right here, right now. I think I'm going to fade out again. Contact Aware Solutions to learn more. And the other thing uh, that it, you've really started doing like fan jerseys for what football teams in the UK. And so imagine kind of getting people to wear uh, a branded uh, apparel almost like as a CRM program, but also maybe as out of home media in a sense. So I'll let you jump in. Sure. Um, the fact is that everything around fashion and sports is to see and be seen wearing a logo. We're all doing it. I can detect some logos around here. So we're all walking ambassadors. Then those customers who actually bought those brands and proudly are wearing those logos should be rewarded. And as you can see, our platform can reward people for wearing the item they actually have and on and wear anyway. So the more you wear your item, and the more points you get, the better the rewards. But not only for wearing it, but wearing it to different locations uh, to increase the brand visibility. So our mission is to create a loyalty and engagement uh, platform for the brand's true influencers, their customers. I think that's the key point, true influencers. You know, brands are really spending millions and millions of dollars on influencers right now. And the customer is sort of like, oh yeah, the customer. But with Aware, it's a loyalty driver, it's a sales driver, but most importantly, for the first time ever, truly, we are creating a personal connection between the brand and the consumer in real time around the world while you wear the product. Now, we have three different use cases. Three different use cases. One is fashion. As we all know in fashion, no one is loyal. I'm sure all of you wear a million different brands. So Aware can create loyalty and engagement for fashion. We're very excited about sports conversations because sports, unlike fashion, everyone's loyal. Whether your team wins or loses, you're still a loyal fan. How do sports teams engage with their fans in real time around the world, not just on game day, but any day? And the third use case is mass producers. How do brands test product before going into production with people who actually sign up to test product and get real-time engagement around the world? So those are our three use cases for Aware. Okay. So what is the current, you've kind of created a currency. In other words, people are participating, uh, wearing the, you know, take it's a fan jersey, it's a game day. Uh, maybe you typically wear your jersey in the pub but now we're getting incremental uh, rewards for wearing it throughout the week, you know, in other places. What's the currency? What do they get? Cool. So the currency is basically based on usage. Right. Unlike uh, money that right. we're using today. So the rewards are bespoke to the brand, but from our pilots, we learned, first of all, that people get really addicted to getting points. So they open the app on a daily mm -hmm. basis which is crazy if you think about it. We're not a search engine app. Mm -hmm. We're not a navigation app. We're a loyalty app. 
but customers are opening the, day, the app every day. So we see that after five months, we have 50% retention rate and we achieve 5% conversion rate. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason is um, because people that purchased their first smart item and activated it, they got addicted to the point system. They wanted to activate another item because the more items you have, the more points you get, and then you can redeem the rewards in the reward store. So what got, so the reward, yeah, you say they too. bespoke to the brand, so would this be more branded merchandise? Is that typ yeah. what, typically oh, what they get? So with uh, Tommy Hilfiger, the rewards were uh, more of an experience. It was an entrance to the fashion week or oh, fashion so show. Backstage pass kind of thing. Yes, okay. um, we're uh, doing um, a pilot with a ski company and it's going to be an access to some ski sites. Um, so every br brand mm -hmm. can choose whatever reward it wants gotcha. to give. Mm -hmm. And you want to chime in on No, I, w I was just going to mm -hmm. say that from a marketing perspective, and this really does live in, truly, it's, it's a marketing play for any single company. Um, we're so excited about the cross-marketing opportunities with like-minded brands. So imagine you have Adidas sneakers and the more you wear your Adidas sneakers, the more points you accumulate and then you can redeem those points for free classes to SoulCycle. Or the more you wear your Gucci handbag, you can accumulate points and redeem them for access to um, you know, an experience that you wouldn't normally be able to get. So. We're excited about that one-to-one -one marketing, but most importantly, what AWARE does is also at scale. So imagine you're a brand and you want to activate at Coachella, and you want people to come to Coachella wearing your logo. With AWARE, you can actually mobilize your consumer army in real time to show up at an event like that in the logo and then incentivize them to do so. You know, I was going to comment that um, I've been hearing some different thought leaders, uh, leaders throughout the CES show this year um, talking about what's really important. And um, look, when you're talking about consumer-facing technologies, I've heard uh, a number of people talk about how if it changes human behavior, it matters. If it doesn't change behavior, it really doesn't matter. Um, and that's more of that creative application of technology. How did you, obviously your consumers are changing behavior because they're getting addicted to your point system, they're wearing the garments more. How did you come up with this idea? Uh, wow, <laughs> this is a long story. <laughs> um, so we started with something else. We started the technology, and maybe I should say a few words about the technology. The technology is um, Bluetooth low energy. So it's all about the internet of things. Everything is smart. When we started it, it was be before the Apple Watch. The need mm -hmm. was to identify fashion items from a distance. And not by image recognition, by, but by a unique ID that is embedded to the item. And we chose Bluetooth low energy when it started. Mm -hmm. Which means when I went to raise money, investors told me, go and write science fiction uh, scripts. Clothes are never going to be smart. I used to be a script writer, so they sent me to, uh, <laughs> to write scripts. Um, now everything is smart um, about it. So when we started it, we were, it was like very ahead of its time. Aliza back then was the head of communication at DKNY. She piloted it. Okay. Um, that's how we met. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got uh, tons of buzz around it. Um, but it was still too early. And thanks to this buzz, I was able mm -hmm. to meet lots of uh, fashion brand CEOs. And I asked mm -hmm. them, what's your pain po point? And mm -hmm. they say loyalty. And loyalty among younger generation. And younger generation, well, we say that they're not loyal to anything. They're not loyal to their mother, to their, par to their boyfriend, girlfriend, school, whatever. <laughs> Uh, but the truth is that they're loyal to technology, mm -hmm. um, and they're using technology. And we've seen that our most loyal customers mm -hmm. are the younger generation, people between 16 to 25. Mm -hmm. They're very addicted. They, all the process is seamless. They need to activate the item only once. They choose if they want to be active customers and play the game, or to be passive customers and just get the rewards when they hit a certain mm -hmm. milestone. But this is the process of when we started. Okay. And then where do you go from there? Let's say you're, you're working with the Tommy Hilfinger brand and you've got the brand fans that are um, committed to this program. 
Do you then take uh, some of that data and then create a brand landscape that says, here are other non-competitive brands but are still part of that brand world that this consumer is involved with and try to approach those companies to, to So I think, I think the most important point of the data is, you know, we, you know, we're all obsessed with CRM, right? So, you know, we always joke that if we are the same handbag, you know, I, I'm an executive in the fashion industry, Iran is an entrepreneur, um, we could have the same handbag but we're totally different customers. Totally different. So with Aware, it's really the first time that you're able to get post-sale behavioral data on product. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about it from a marketing perspective and creating customer segmentation, this is how you become a smart marketer because you can't market the same way to a student that you would an executive or an entrepreneur mm -hmm. that you would, I don't know, a DJ or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. And how they're wearing the product in their lives, that is the data that Aware can give companies. So we are very uniquely mm -hmm. B2B and B2C because you know, we all are consumers. Mm -hmm. Why not get rewarded for representing a brand? Okay. Now, um, about different use case in mass. So for example, for fashion, again, we can uh, gather some fashion brands that are, uh, they don't mm -hmm. compete. And like Adidas, uh, Alisa said about Adidas example, uh, to get uh, free lessons in soul cycle. So to collaborate mm -hmm. with more and more retailers and create this platform in the sport use case, it's different. It can be a competition between fans. Mm -hmm. Like let's say that Chelsea competing against United. United lost again, but the fans are very, very, very loyal. And then the fans win because they were the Jersey a lot, so too bad the team lost, mm -hmm. but your fans actually are very loyal and they're wearing it not only just for the game, but they wear it every time and they mm -hmm. encourage the brand. So it can be competition against fans um, and we can take it to so many directions mm -hmm. thanks to the gamification. Have you ever used this for more kind of purpose-led um, causes? Um, what you're just saying reminds me of a case I heard about in Brazil where they had uh, the, the intense fans of these various football teams um, competing against each other, not in terms of how their teams are winning, but signing up for a blood drive and tracking how many fans of oh one God. team signed up and then keeping that real live, you know, comparison going on. And have you seen? I'm, I'm smiling okay. because in honor of a soccer team approached me and asked me if we can detect this fight before they happen. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, we can't. <laughs> we okay. can't. But we can do cause marketing for sure. <laughs> but yeah. That hasn't come up yeah. yet because you know, yes. your sense. It's like I've done some writing about with like people-powered brands and how you know when you kind of tr take your uh, loyal consumer and give them, um, you know, engage them whether it's in cr uh, content creation or being part of a bigger a campaign, you know, you have much better uh, connection and loyalty um, when they're really a part of that. And so I would think you could take this idea, and I don't know how much you concept with your clients or how much they concept it and say, can you do this? Um, is that a partnership relationship? How does that work? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly on the table. I mean, I think the key is, you know, there's a gazillion use cases because we can mobilize people mm -hmm. in real time. If you're wearing the item, we can actually get, we can make people go to the same bar. We can make people go to the same event. If we were doing it at CES right now, we could have all of you guys who are wearing a certain brand come into, you know, access to a VIP lounge of some kind. So, so how would you do that? What does that look like? So if we, if you guys were all wearing, let's say Tommy Hilfiger right now, and you were all scattered around CES, we would message you and say, hey guys, if you're wearing Tommy right now, come meet in room so N253. Yeah. yeah. You're not sending a sensor no, into the garment. No, nothing is buzzing on your body, to be clear. Um, <laughs> because that, there are those yes, types no, no, of no. You know, so this smart. Is, this is, this is yeah. we are assuming that you want to do nothing, right? You want to do nothing. So once your garment is paired, you need do nothing else except accumulate points and if you want to participate in the sort of gamified hotspot thing, so a hotspot could be at CES, you could all come and we could give you access to something really cool that no one else would be invited mm -hmm. to. So that, and then, yeah, if you want to donate blood when you get there, sure. So well, I, mean, I, think it's, I think it's, I think mm -hmm. the possibilities are endless, truly. I, I just want to give an example. When we tried to prove this concept of mobilizing mm -hmm. people before any brand wanted to sign with us, so mm -hmm. we needed to prove it. We did a pilot with um, NYU students. So mm -hmm. we gave some uh, unbranded t-shirts with tags inside and we told them, 
to download an app, activate the item. Mm -hmm. Then in a random time during the day, we saw that they are sitting in their class, different mm -hmm. faculties, different classes, and we send them to buy Chloe, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very popular coffee shop around, like, around NYU. Right. And we told them you will get a free cupcake if you're going to there in the next 10 minutes. 80% mm -hmm. of the students left class. So, <laughs> so we were able to take them from mm -hmm. different faculties, different lessons, and take them just okay. for a free cupcake. Okay, you, you might have been considerate of the break, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't, we wanted to see yeah. the engagement. Does, does anyone have any questions from the audience? I think it's fascinating. Yeah, some folks right there, if they can bring some mics. Yeah. So, um, when I think about the between closing in, that feels relatively expensive. Are you looking at other ways to get at this that don't require something very expensive? We're thinking about a mass retail product. Sure. So, um, we're looking at it as a, the brands are looking at it as part of their marketing budget. Uh, first of all, we, in mass, we will be able to reduce the cost. No, it's not going to cost like RFID, but we're not selling Bluetooth tags. We're selling a platform. We're selling a data platform, an application, engagement. And again, it's part of the marketing budget. We're not even touching, with their produ touching the production budget. Otherwise, they'll start uh, um, talking to us like we're uh, an RFID uh, produ producer. <laughs> But to that point, the production of adding in the tags to the garments is as simple as like a spare button. Yes, yeah, and behind. Hi. I love the idea of adding this interactive element to clothing, but it seems to me that high end fashion brands could be cheapened by a financial incentive for wearing this clothes and they actually change the way word of mouth marketing happens for the brand. How do you think about avoiding that? So with high-end fashion brands, the key is experience, right? So it's experience on every level. So we're not recommending that a high-end fashion brand give out discount codes, right? This would be more like if you are a top customer of a brand like Louis Vuitton, for example, you would be able to get access to an experience, maybe go to the Maison in Paris or, or whatever the case may be, that is very different than something we would do with like a Tommy Hilfiger jeans brand. So that's when we say the, the rewards are bespoke and the app is bespoke. You know, we become, the technology becomes whatever the brands dictate. So that's why we see it as marketing because, you know, when, I think when we speak to brands, it's like, what do you want to do for your consumers? How do you want to reward them? In the same way, quite honestly, we're all rewarding influencers right now and, and the ROI on that is like, iffy at best, right? So I think that um, it is bespoke and how you build out these loyalty programs is, it, it just depends on the brand. And, mm -hmm. and no, I agree with you totally. It is 100% different for high-end fashion. That's a good point about the influencers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one more question, or I think we're getting close to time. I know we'll be available during the lunch, so. Yeah, one, more. one more, okay, in the back there. We have a, mic we have a microphone over here. Or just scream. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, do you do any cross-branding? For yeah. example, like sports, you know, if, if your company, Starbucks, everybody at headquarters wears the Seahawks uh, jersey, do, do Starbucks customers, I mean, is there any cross-branding right. that way? So that was exactly what I meant when I was talking about Adidas and SoulCycle. So with Tommy, they did a partnership with Live Nation, right? So Tommy Jeans is really sort of like their DNA is music-based. And Live Nation was the perfect partner for rewards for that particular campaign. So, and, and that's where it becomes this endless opportunity mm -hmm. of cross-marketing for like-minded brands. Similar, you know, to the hotspots in Pokemon Go, right? So, yeah. So, all right, well, thank you. Thank play, you. Thanks for thank sharing with Gwen. us how we can play with our clothes. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thank you.